And for a lot of people, low normal isn't normal enough. Um, what we find is the hormone levels will be just skirting the bottom end of normal at the lab. And these patients have these symptoms of fatigue, weight gain, their cholesterol might be elevated. They may be losing hair, having thinning hair. They may have menstrual irregularities, uh, memory loss. And these patients should really actually be treated. And in the field of integrative medicine, we do treat low normal thyroid. So although they don't technically meet criteria to say that they have hypothyroid per se, because of the presence of symptoms, most experts in integrative medicine feel very strongly that clients should be treated under those circumstances. So stress, you know, everybody's under stress. We have all different types of stress going on today, and unfortunately, much of it is quite chronic. And for those of you that listen to our past, past podcasts, Stress is not supposed to be chronic. It's supposed to be acute and resolved quickly. Uh, that mechanism is called the fight-or-flight mechanism, as we've discussed previously. And fight-or-flight is a necessary response for our survival. Back when we had predators, back when uh, we were vulnerable and susceptible, um, we needed the system to defend us. So we would either run or fight a predator or an enemy of some type uh, that threatened our life. We don't necessarily run into that anymore. We're a little bit closer to the top of the food chain. We have shelter and we have weapons and different things to protect us. Um, but the fight or flight mechanism is still alive and well and functioning. Because we're such complex beings, it would take hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years for us to genetically change so that fight or flight mechanisms didn't respond the way that they did 40, 50,000 years ago. And so that fight or flight mechanism is still functioning just the same. And remember that although we can process our stress and we can look at our stress and realize it's not immediately life-threatening because we have eyes and we have a brain to make the calculations. On a cellular level, our individual cells don't have eyes or brain. And all that's going on on that level is chemistry. And so as chronic stress hormones are released in the bloodstream and circulate through the body, the cells have to respond to them because they don't know that the, the stress is not immediate and they don't know that the stress is not life-threatening. They don't have the ability to know. And so they have to respond. And so what happens is your cells think you're in fight-or-flight mode constantly, whereas you, as an individual, don't realize it. You don't feel it as much. Um, we tend to normalize stress. We tend to... Um, you know, kind of say, it doesn't matter, I still have to move on with life. You know, so we tend to suppress our stress, we tend not to process it um, so that we don't have acute responses, so that we don't feel anxious all the time, so that we don't have, you know, high pulse rate all the time. We normalize our stress. But our cells cannot normalize stress, and they can't tell all the different types of stress from each other. So what happens is the chronic stress hormone cortisol suppresses thyroid function. It actually suppresses your body's ability to turn T4 into T3. And again, remember, T4 is not an active hormone. <clears throat> it's kind of on standby. And it gets converted on an as-needed basis. And if cortisol is present, it prevents this function. It prevents the T4 from being activated. And so what it does <clears throat> is cause a relative hypothyroidism. And then you end up with these symptoms of fatigue, weight gain, hair loss, constipation, uh, possibly depression, anxiety, high cholesterol. Um, again, with left unchecked, that can progress to 
frank hypothyroidism, Alzheimer's dementia, heart disease, and potentially cancer. So it's important for us to begin to have this conversation as to why are we not checking free T3 levels and why are we not treating the patients rather than blood work? <clears throat> so if we were to use new criteria to diagnose thyroid disease, if we were to check a free T3 level as well as a free T4 level and a TSH, so it either will become T3 or it will become reverse T3. It's kind of a fork in the road that the T4 has. Um, and so if we see increased levels of reverse T3, that tells us that that client is not properly activating their thyroid hormone. And that gives us an idea, um, you know, that their thyroid is, is being suppressed. Free T3 levels are very narrow. Most labs will say levels of 2.3 to 4.2. Um, T4, that range um, is not quite as important simply because it's not active, but we want a free T4 of approximately 1.4, 1.5, according to lab standard. Um, so if you don't fall in those ranges, you really want to have your thyroid uh, assessed um, and treated in some form or fashion. So when we come back, we're going to talk about stress intervention and nutrition intervention to support thyroid function and take a couple more of your questions. So again, we're getting ready for our next commercial break and thank you for listening to Awakened Wellness with me, Len Rayo Bay, MD. We're here on Dream Vision 7 Radio and you can learn more about Rio Bay Integrative Medicine at riobayintegrativemedicine.com. Our number is 833-220-1200. We'll take some questions when we come back. Thank you. What happens when we begin to realize that the 200-year experiment we've called the American healthcare system has failed? Learn how spirituality, ancient traditions, and cutting-edge science are merging to create a new paradigm of wellness on Awakened Wellness with Milen Riobe, MD. Tune in every Tuesday at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Time with live shows on the first and third mornings when you can call in and ask Dr. Milan the questions that matter most to you. Dr. Milan is the medical director of the Riave Institute of Integrative Medicine in Jupiter, Florida. For more information, visit riaveintegrativemedicine.com. Dream Vision 7 Radio Network invites you in for this dynamic, forward-thinking show. Omega Institute, offering workshops, retreats, and online learning dedicated to awakening the best in the human spirit. For 40 years, Omega has been a gathering place for great thinkers, creative talent, spiritual teachers, and social visionaries. With 390 workshops to choose from, Omega offers something for everyone. Located in Rhinebeck, New York, just 90 miles north of New York City, Omega's natural environment and quiet pace allow for extraordinary experiences to unfold. Learn more at eomega.org. Edesia is a U.S. nonprofit dedicated to the dream of ending childhood malnutrition for millions of children around the world. Through the manufacture of Plumpy Nut and other nutrient-rich, peanut-based, ready-to-use foods, Edesia has already delivered life and hope to nearly 1 million children in over 26 developing countries. To find out how you can join Edesia's dream of ending childhood malnutrition, please visit ediciaglobal.org. After narrowly surviving the attack on Sandy Hook Elementary, first grade teacher Caitlin Roy DeVellis was left searching for answers that would never come. Eventually, she chose to focus on questions that could be answered. How do I make sure this tragedy doesn't define us? How do we get our control back? Those two questions led her to found the 501c3 nonprofit organization, Classes for Classes. When gifts poured into their classroom, she decided they would help someone else by paying it forward and being kind. 
This developed into a social network which allows K-8 classrooms to connect so that every student in the United States can learn these crucial lessons. Classes for Classes' mission is to build students' social-emotional intelligence by connecting them to care. All c for c projects are crowdfunded. Any teacher in the U.S. can visit classesforclasses.org. That's classes, the number four, classes.org. Sign up today. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. Welcome back to Awakened Wellness with Milan Riobe, MD. I'm your host, Dr. Milan. Today we're exploring thyroid, the misunderstood hormone, why millions are misdiagnosed, and what you can do about it. So if you're having your thyroid treated and your blood work looks normal, it's important to know because that, that should be addressed. And the way that can be addressed is to add T3. Uh, again, the brand name for T3 is called Cytomel. Um, and I have noted that more and more conventional physicians are starting to prescribe Cytomel, which is good. Um, but if someone is not converting Synthroid into its active form, they really should be given some Cytomel. And again, you have to check hormone levels and it's critical to check a free T3 value uh, for someone on Cytomel so that you know that they're on the right dosage. So the combination of Synthroid and Cytomel is an option. And then there are um, capsules that you can take or have compounded for you that have the combination built in, so you only have to take one capsule. Uh, Some brand names are called Armor Thyroid or NP Thyroid. Um, There's also West Thyroid and Nature Thyroid. Uh, and WP thyroid. And essentially, they're all combined thyroids. And if you don't fall right into one of the doses that are made, you can have your your thyroid actually compounded uh, with the T3 and T4 uh, customized to your needs based on where your symptoms are improved and your blood work looks better. Symptoms are much more important than blood work, but it's important to make sure that you're not getting... Uh, overdosed on thyroid. Um, Excessive thyroid hormone replacement can lead to, has been associated with breast cancer um, and heart disease, uh, arrhythmias. So it's it's something that's really critically important to to monitor closely. And when we are first starting someone out on thyroid hormone replacement, we check their levels approximately once a month. Um, and if you're checking a T3 level, it's important to have that patient take their medication that morning and wait a few hours, ideally about four hours, so you can kind of see where the peak of the T3 level is going to be, and that helps you dose. Um, and again, it's important to listen to the client. So if that client is complaining of symptoms that lead you to believe that they're overdosed, but their labs look normal, it's important to drop the dose a little bit uh, just so that they don't have symptoms. Um, It's critically important to look at both how, how is, how are your symptoms doing and what do the labs look like? And you have to use both. Um, Can't use one or the other in isolation. The other thing that I prefer to do with my clients is to also look at stress, look at nutrition, Uh, That's critically important when treating thyroid, and even more important than that is uh, looking at their uh, adrenals in terms of stress. Uh, And really, it's not more important. It's equally important, I should say, Um, because, again, stress suppresses thyroid function. You don't want to treat it in a vacuum. It's important to treat the thyroid if it's being suppressed, but you don't want to ignore the fact that the body is being negatively impacted by stress because if it's impacting the thyroid, that means it's impacting your whole body, essentially. And so looking again at the adrenal hormones, looking at uh, cortisol levels, looking at DHEA, which is an adrenal hormone that uh, kind of is the opposer of the stress hormone cortisol. Um, 
um, it kind of balances cortisol. So it's important to have DHEA in the system balanced with cortisol. So checking that's important and also looking at testosterone levels because 